Mr. Koch, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Thank you. And my, my pleasure. <laughs> um, what are your views about the current plans for a pact for competitiveness? I think the current plans are absolutely uh, indispensable uh, for two reasons. First of all, the world around us is changing rapidly. Uh, uh, the aging society uh, poses a number of additional uh, challenges. Uh, so uh, we run the risk of uh, losing uh, relevance in the world uh, as European nations. And this is true for the smaller country, but also for the larger countries and moreover. There is the uh, connection with the um, uh, difficulties around the euro. And I think uh, reducing uh, public deficits is one thing. But if you don't work on a kind of uh, uh, action plan in order to improve your competitiveness, increase your productivity, mm -hmm. then you miss the boat. Um, so uh, I, uh, I think uh, a concerted and uh, focused uh, action at the European level in order to improve the competitiveness of our economies is uh, very important. Mm. Thank you. If you compare the situation today to back in 2004 when you drafted the famous Koch report, which was the mid for the midterm review of the Lisbon agenda, how is the situation different today? Uh, well, first of all, the European spirit, if you can use uh, that word, is not improving. We are not moving into the right direction. Um, so there's a, a certain lack of connectivity between uh, what is said at the European level and what is being felt as, as, as being urgent by, by citizens in the national states. And moreover, as I said already, we have had the financial crisis. And although the financial crisis did not originate from here, it has impacted uh, enormously on uh, the European uh, economies. Uh, all our uh, uh, budgets are uh, under, under pressure, mm -hmm. uh, to say the least. And uh, massive um, uh, uh, policies are necessary in order to restore the balance. And uh, um, so that's a huge difference, of course, with, uh, with five, six years yeah. ago when uh, we did not yet uh, think about this uh, eventual uh, situation where a crisis like this uh, would, uh, would happen. Mm. Absolutely. What would you like to see as the top priorities between now and, let's say, the year 2020? Uh, we're here to, yeah. to discuss uh, the Europe 2020 strategy. So what should be the top priorities in your point of yeah. view? Uh, the top priorities are threefold, in my view. First of all, a an effective uh, rescue or financial stability plan mm. um, in order to, um, to, um, to uh, support, not only support uh, weaker member states who really are, are, have run into problems, but also to support our common uh, currency, the euro. Mm. And that's also a selfish uh, argument, namely, namely uh, it's in our own, uh, in our, of our, in our own benefit. Mm. Uh, to, to do that. So it's not helping others, but also um, uh, taking care of ourselves. So that's one element. Second element is that the, um, the um, targets, uh, but also the implementation of the targets uh, for the governance of the, uh, uh, the Stability and Growth Pact have to be uh, strengthened. And uh, thirdly, uh, we need uh, a competitive respect mm -hmm. Uh, as uh, presented uh, by uh, the European Commission and uh, governed and implemented in an effective way. And these three main priorities are interconnected and mm -hmm. I think we shouldn't have the impression because you talked in your question about what, what are the priorities between now and 2020, mm -hmm. that there's not much time to lose. Yeah. So uh, we have to do that already um, at, at short notice and not think, well, OK, we can wait for another few years. No, the most immediate uh, action on all these three fields is absolutely necessary to restore confidence and trust, trust uh, from the outside world and also uh, of, uh, of, of citizens of our countries. Mm. Very interesting. So perhaps linked to that, uh, what would your advice be to European leaders today? Yeah, it's always easy as a former leader <laughs> to, to, to give advices mm. and uh, uh, things are easily, more easily said than done. I, I know how, how politics worked and how they work nowadays. But I would say um, 
be as forward-looking and op open-minded as possible. Um, and this is this is pretty challenging in times where uh, quite some people tend to become uh, somewhat more inward-looking, mm. uh, tend to become defensive or even protectionist, and uh, don't tend to be that much open-minded. But I think it's absolutely necessary because, uh, again, the outside world is not waiting for us. Mm. Uh, changing rapidly our uh, relevance in the world uh, 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 is reducing. This is not dramatic, something dramatic, but we should draw consequences out of it uh, by joining forces. And uh, by joining forces, uh, the European Union and its member states can be stronger and more uh, mm. meaningful in, in the world. And uh, so I think it's important to be forward-looking in order to prepare for a future that is really worthwhile for uh, citizens uh, to, uh, to be part of. Mm. So what you're saying is, uh, in this current environment, it is still possible to be forward-looking. Because some people would argue that countries no longer have the luxury of being forward-looking and just have to deal with the immediate crisis. Now, yeah, what's, what's the alternative? The alternative mm. is just concentrate on, on the issues of today, but you have to, uh, to, to, to draw a kind of map about how the future uh, most mm. probably will look like and how you want to uh, be master of your own destiny. Mm. And if we want to keep our, uh, our welfare states uh, in most of the European countries, uh, mm. we have well-developed welfare states, for example, and uh, we need a certain level of economic growth in order to for this also in the, on the longer run. So if we need to uh, to keep all that, and uh, of course there will be some reforms necessary in the meantime, but if we want mm. to keep all that, we have to work on it. And we cannot just uh, concentrate on the daily uh, work that has to be done, but really mm. concentrate too uh, on what is really uh, needed on a somewhat longer term. Yeah, it's very true. And that's, that's in competitiveness, of course, always mm. the case because you talk about making your economy more competitive, that means that you have to innovate, that you have to invest in uh, innovation and in excellence in education and technology. That all doesn't come overnight, mm -hmm. so that takes time, but um, uh, somewhere you must start. If you don't start today, you have to start tomorrow, well, then you will be I, then you will lose ground uh, over, over time. Mm, absolutely. You know, we will show this video at the Europe 2020 summit, and I was wondering, is there anything you want to leave us with, any kind of sentiment you would like to instill in the participants, something that should be done really now? No, I think uh, it would not be, not be correct if I would say that people are not uh, criticizing their, their governments and not criticizing European institutions. Sometimes uh, I think I have the, the, the feeling that, uh, that uh, the communication effort mm. in order to translate what is being done at the European level and why it is done to uh, the citizens in, 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 in our societies uh, could be improved. Uh, there's a massive communication effort still to be undertaken. Mm. Um, you must never forget, of course, that, that uh, decisions have to land somewhere in, uh, in civil society and organizations. And I think uh, too many people uh, lose sight mm. sometimes about what is done at the European level. So uh, keep that in mind. Mm. Don't only have summits and, and statements and meetings, but also try to explain and then not only by explaining, you also can try to convince and, and keep, keep people on board or get people on board mm. in order to, to make this a common journey. Sometimes citizens don't understand why this, this, all this work is done at the European level. So if you want to improve your competitiveness, if you want to raise your, your productivity, if you want to make your uh, budget uh, sustainable, uh, don't only take decisions at the top, but try to relate this to what, uh, what, in, what the hearts of minds of, of individual citizens uh, think about all this. That's the perfect way to conclude this interview. Thank you so much, Mr. Kerr. My pleasure. Thank you very much.